I'm so pleased to be a part of the Imanescu Po Transatlantic Online Conference, second edition. And I want to extend a special thank you to Jan Jakob for inviting me. I am the president of the Poe Studies Association, and our mission is to support the scholarly and informal exchange of information on the life, works, times, and influence of Edgar Allan Poe. I have only recently been introduced to the works of Mihai Imanescu, but that does not mean that those in Poe studies are unaware of the connection between this great Romanian poet and Edgar Poe. In fact, whereas I am reliant on translations of Eminescu's poems and prose, we do have Romanian scholars who focus on Poe and seek to trace his influences on Romania's prominent writers, including Eminescu. Notably, Eminescu translated Poe's short story Morella in 1876, likely using Baudelaire's French translation. What I'd like to focus on in this brief talk is some of the striking similarities that I have observed between these writers' lives and works. Both writers have ties to the theater. Eminescu worked for two troops before taking a situation with the National Theater. While Poe never worked for a theater, his parents were both actors, his mother the more successful of the two, in December 1835 and January 1836, Poe published his unfinished drama, Politian, in two installments for the Southern Literary Messenger. As their careers progressed, they cultivated distinctive looks. A hint of unruly hair, serious countenances, and engaging eyes. These portraits evoke what Livu Cotro dubs, quote, the highly popular poet moody stance, end quote. They both experienced tragic love affairs. For Eminescu, Veronica Mikla captured his heart. They interacted at literary salons, dedicated poems to one another, had an unfulfilled engagement, and she published a work that featured poetry by both of them after Eminescu's death. She committed suicide shortly thereafter. Although Virginia Poe, Edgar's wife, experienced a tragic situation, the figure in Poe's life that I believe more closely resembles Eminescu's Veronica is Sarah Helen Whitman. She and Poe also met one another during a literary event, a lecture. They wrote poems to one another and she issued a defense of Poe in 1860, a response to those who tried to impugn the dead writer's character. Although she never attempted suicide, her interest in Poe after his death did not wane. She purportedly held seances in attempts to communicate with him. Delicate health, alcohol dependence, and mysterious deaths at the age of 39 also unite these writers. Unfortunately, both writers experienced bouts of losing self-control. Eminescu suffered from a nervous breakdown and Poe's skirmishes involving alcohol are notorious. In fact, reports of alcohol dependence plaguing these writers are inescapable. At 39, Eminescu died, but the cause is questionable. The same phenomenon applies to Poe. Even today, doctors and others are drawn to speculating on the demises of these men. Eminescu certainly exhibits sympathy with Poe's own outlook on life and how he writes about life in his poetry and tales. According to Ana Olos, Poe's sustained popularity in Romania and abroad can be attributed to two factors, quote, the impressive variety of his work and the cult generated by the story of his short, unhappy, and troubled life." End quote. I think these same points can be made in relation to Eminescu. I hope readers will continue to read Poe and Eminescu as complementary writers. 